I'm assuming that you're building this thing for where you're going, not not where you are. Like, how, how do you think about that? It's just focusing on one thing, which is focusing on the agents and helping them build a business and helping them create opportunity for them, showing them how to do it and help them work on their skills. Just taking a leap of faith. So talk to me about, about the business. I mean, you're close to 100 mm-hmm. units on an annualized basis. I mean, you're, you're mm-hmm. doing close to 40 million in sales. I, is it you? Is it you and a team? What's what's your setup today? Yeah, it's me and a team. So we have, we have, we actually just hired two new sales agents. We have a total of nine. We have two VAs, virtual assistants, and then we have one, what we call client care. So she just loves on her clients. And then we have one gal that's for just for marketing. So we have four support staff and a total of nine sales agents. Now, th- that seems like a rather large infrastructure, but I'm assuming that you're mm-hmm. building this thing for where you're going, not not where you are. When, when you think about it, that kind of nucleus, do you think that will be the nucleus that could service, what, a, a hundred million in volume? Like, how, how do you think about that? I believe you have to focus, again, it's just focusing on one thing, which is focusing on the agents and helping them build a business and helping them create opportunity for them, showing them how to do it and help them work on their skills. But it's hard to go back and forth. I learned, so it's just taking a leap of faith, which just happened like last week where I gave a listing appointment away and cause I don't work with buyers much, but oh, <laughs> I know that's part. like your heart's palpable. Mm-hmm. I know what that feels like because yeah, you know that it's a guarantee that if you go out there, it's done, you know exactly mm-hmm. how much money you're going to make and you know all the next steps with that leap of yeah. faith is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So but you just have to trust. What is, what's the superpower for this business? I mean, there, it's one thing to wake up and without, trying hit some sort of level of achievement but you've clearly broken through that and now you're trying to double the business what's the lead generation lever that has gotten you here and what's the one that you think will allow you to double the volume so for me personally it's been my sphere and then also expired and forced out by owner however it's going to be different for each agent based off their personality so our goal is to find out what each agent on the team is excelling at and also what they enjoy doing because everyone's created differently so my goal is to find out like what each agent is doing really well at and what they enjoy doing and then give them more opportunity around what they're doing well at I love that. Needless to say, if you are picking up the phone, everyone do it in a TCPA friendly compliant way. That's the only way to operate Mm -hmm. the real estate business. Okay. So Mm -hmm. let me, I I heard SOI, I heard expired, I heard FISBO, I heard open house. Uh, Of all of the different levers that you have, this list of sources, I know that there's a model in a system because I know that an open house can be done one of several ways. One of the ways is you just put up one sign in the front lawn at one o'clock on a Sunday and hang out till four and you bake cookies and then eat them all yourself. That was my system. Mm -hmm. Not the (laughs) best. But I'm guessing yours is different. So here's what I'd like to do. I want to unpack one of these. And so in your mind, make the decision between what you think the most powerful system that you have. Is it around SOI, expired, FISBO, open house, whatever one it is. Walk me through from start to finish for one of these things so that if I'm, mm. if I'm watching this and I'm another agent, I can learn the open house model. Sure. Yeah. So I think, I think an open house model, it's, is like printing money. So I think it would be the most beneficial to speak on. Okay. So, um, I mean, and this is something that Gary even has a model around, which is the seventh level open house. So we do it in the seventh level and we actually have two different types of open house systems, which, cause we have luxury too. So I think luxury in the affluence that you're going to talk to them differently than you are a traditional price range. So for, um, an open house, we're going to on Thursdays, we, I'm sorry, Friday by four o'clock, we're going to put out open house signs and we're going to put out three on each. Well, wait turn. A minute, though. I, I want to hit that, but yeah. Walk me through. How do I ever get to Friday? Like start me at mm. start me at the beginning of whenever this process starts. Is it that I have to identify which house sure. I'm going to do on Monday? I, I, take me from step one. Yes. So our admin team support team likes us to have our open house scheduled by Wednesday of the previous so, week or of mm-hmm. the current week. Oh no, I'm sorry, the current week. Okay. Yes. The, so open the house. Week. So 
Now, when I'm thinking about which homes, because I know you carry mm -hmm. so many listings, I mm -hmm. is there are there certain homes that make for a better open house than others? Is there any sort of criteria or is it just pick any? Yeah. So how I got our clients is <clears throat> we want to be able to, it depends like what area you want to focus on. So say you want to, you want to farm an area, then you may find another agent to the fair open house rather than one of our listings. <clears throat> so you want to be able to like focus on an area. So you call an agent and you want to do like a high traffic area and you want to also something that's like newer on the market. <clears throat> so I think that's important, like something that's new on the market that has not been stale, just like sitting on the market. So what I love about open house is that you get to choose the price and you also get to choose the location. So if you're taking internet leads, you don't really get to pick the location. You don't get to pick the price. You just get to receive whatever is coming towards you. So what's great with an open house is you get to pick the location and you get to pick the price range as well, which I think is great. So step one, I'm going to pick my open house. I'm going to be cognizant of the fact that I can pick my price and location, and I'm going to have this done by Wednesday. What happens next? Mm -hmm. So by Wednesday, and so you will have to call an agent and maybe an agent with a different company. Mm. Like I actually had Josh Anderson who let me do an open house because I really wanted to get in Green Hills. And he had this amazing open house that was like close to 2 million. So it's a price range that I want to focus on. It's a neighborhood that I want to focus on. So he made it easy where he had everything done already. So I just picked He's up the coolest. The Isn't he the easiest yeah. guy to do business with? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. And not every agent's going to allow you to do an open house on their listing especially if they already have a team. So for him to do that was like huge, huge. for him to allow me. So um, basically we create leverage for our agents. So we want to be able to um, have like a box prepared for the agent. So in this box, we'll have flyers, sign-in sheets, rating sheets, everything that agent needs. I love that. So in my box, I get the flyer for the open house with my contact info because I'm the agent. I'm asking. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Then I get Correct. the sign-in yes. sheet. I get the rating sheet. Yep. Anything else? And business cards, pens, and then that's about it. And we just say, hey, just use water and chocolates. So we learned over the years, people don't really grab cookies, but they will grab like wrapped chocolate. So keep it simple, water. Yeah. And they usually go out and buy it and they buy the balloons. And then we um, we reimburse them for those those two things. Cool. So yeah. I picked my open house by Wednesday. I got my, my box, which had in it my flyer, my sign-in sheet, my rating sheet. Um, my mm -hmm. pens, my uh, um, my chocolates, my water. I love that. Individually wrapped, which I, is COVID friendly. Um, then yeah. they're buying the balloons. And I'm, you said now I'm putting my signs out. You said Friday? About four. Friday mm -hmm. by four. Needless to say, everybody should follow the rules in any municipality that they're in and honor all HOAs. Perfect. So mm -hmm. by Friday by four, how many signs? Ten signs put out. Okay. And then... I wouldn't put the address on them and I wouldn't put the time on them because we have like a yard open house sign that we put in the yard that says between two and four. Cause we want them to drive to the house before they actually like know what time it is. Okay. So the pointer should direct them to where the house is at. And then there's a yard sign that says, okay, it's open between two and four. That's great. So we learned that way. We don't have to, cause it, there's a lot of trouble to like change out the address and the time. I love that. Okay. Now, then what? Yep. Then um, we use Coal Realty and we pull the numbers and we pull email addresses. So through Evite, we're sending out emails, letting them know about the open house, the neighborhood know about the open house. And then we're also calling them as a customer service call to let them know like, hey, we're holding an open house in the area. Would you like to pick your neighbor? Because most people that live in the area know about other people that want to move to the area. So this is also how we get listings. Like we're going to be proactive and market your property. So, smart. so if it's our listing, then we're letting the neighborhood know about it too. That's so good. You're having these open houses. You're capturing these people. There's got to be something follow-up wise afterwards, right? Because I think people do open houses and then people walk out of the houses and they never hear from the realtors again. I'm guessing you all are a little different. Yeah, absolutely. They go into follow-up boss, they go into our CRM, and then we have an action plan that's applied. So we use the eight by eight. So 
of course, we know on the MRA book that you touch them eight times after you meet with them. So you give them things of value. So as they're walking through the house as well, we call, we call it fact finding. So we ask questions to find out as the who, what, when, why, tell me, tell me what, tell me more um, questions that we ask as they walk through. And then we find out what is the problem Um, Because we want to solve their problem. We want to help them. So we follow up with things of value. And it could be homes for sale. It could be a a certain type of loan product that's out there. Whatever they need, whatever the problem is. And right now what we're hearing is that interest rates are are going up. So they're not going to look for a home anymore. Or um, they're going to hear the market's going to crash. It's like telling them like, hey, no, the good news right now is if you're able to buy a home right now, it's a good time to buy a home. So we just we just send them things of value. So it, it depends what they buy is, but it is something of value the first day and then giving them a call three days later and making sure they got that item of value. And then it's sending them something else of value. And we try to do like, mailers as well like two direct mails it could be like a thank you card for coming to the open house but there is an action plan that our agents can just apply so they don't have to think oh what do i do what do i send them like they know like okay i just have to follow these tasks to be able to follow up with them i'm gonna run this back make sure i got this right number one i'm gonna pick my open house by wednesday i'm gonna pick the price and location that i want because i get to make choices Number two, I'm going to make sure that I have my open house box, which in your case, your administrative folks are creating it. It's going to have my flyer, my sign-in sheet, my rating sheet, which will also help me get the contact info of the consumer. It's going to have my pens, and it's going to have my water and my individually wrapped chocolates, which are fantastic, and I prefer Godiva. Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. balloons never hurt, although we don't use them on luxury. Then by Mm -hmm. Friday by 4, we're going to put out the signs, 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Then... Well, they're there, we're fact finding. What's the problem that the buyer is trying to solve? Because we want to solve problems. After that, we go into step six, which is in some eight by eight follow up, which may include two pieces of handwritten or some sort of direct mail. Did I get yep. that? Yep, you got it. And the tech stack for this is going to be follow up boss on the CRM and Cole Realty Resource to get the email addresses and the data of all of the people in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. That's the missing step. Yep. I didn't document that. You're going to be contacting yeah. the people in the neighborhood prior to Friday or during the weekend? So it's during the week. So once they find out by Wednesday, so then we have our virtual assistant that puts them into Vulcan 7 so they can use the dial alert and then be able to drop a voicemail and be able to call. So you get the numbers from Cool Realty, but you use Vulcan as the dialer. And they, if they actually, if one of our agents talks to one of the neighbors and they are able to capture an email, then they go into follow up boss. But that happens on Wednesday. So they start calling on Thursday. And then, depending on their time block schedule, is like when they will call. So it could be, hey, we'll start calling on Thursday and then call again on Saturday if needed. I love that. Friends, if you're going to be using any of these pieces of technology, use them in a TCPA friendly, compliant way. Uh, we want to make sure that every call you're making, you're making mm-hmm. safe. Aaron, this is an honor for me. Thank you for everything you're doing for KW. Thank you for everything you're doing for all your agents, for all the homeowners uh, in Nashville. And on behalf of your MAPS coach, Kara, thank you for being the best part of Killer Williams. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. If you love these videos, click right here to see more of them. Go ahead, click it. Don't you go. I'm going. You click.